So the next question that we have is this uh, problem here. So this is similar to your exam next week, okay? So using the solubility product of silver chloride, okay? So how are we going to calculate this? So how are we going to solve this one? Calculate the delta G for the process silver chloride producing silver iodide and chloride ion. So how are we going to solve this? So how are we going to start this one? Anyone? So, to answer this question, you need to have KSP equals to, I'm going to put it here. So how are we going to solve this? So you have delta G equals to RTLN KSP. Solve it. So if we're going to do this, so what will be the answer? Anyone? Hello? comes out to uh, 55,000, I guess you could just say 5.6 5. 5. times 10 to the 3 joules. 5.6 times 10 to the? 3. Uh, 10 to the 4, yes. So that would be around 56 kilojoules per mole, okay? So uh, as you could see here, we were able to solve the delta G using what we call the given K. So what will happen? Will this happen spontaneously? Um, no, it needs to input of energy. It's not it's non spontaneous. So, as you could going to look at here, it has what? A negative, a positive sign. So, it will not happen spontaneously based on the value. Okay. So, this is the reason why silver chloride is slightly soluble. Okay. Now, how about the other one? This one. Try to solve it. Mm -hmm. 
So it says here the equilibrium constant for the reaction N2O4 producing 2NO2 is 0.13 at 290 uh, 98 Kelvin. So which corresponds to standard free energy of 5.40 kilojoules per mole. So in a certain experiment, the initial pressures are pressure of NO2 0.122 and pressure of N2O4 as 0.453 atmosphere. So calculate the delta G for the reaction at this pressure and predict the net reaction of the equilibrium. So if we're going to get it. So delta G equals to the standard delta G plus RT ln Q. And then based on this, what are we going to do? So we have here the standard free energy, which is 5.40 kilojoules per mole plus 8.314 joules k mole times 298, then ln. So how are we going to do the ln here? Anyone? So the Q would be the same as the, the K. So yep. it would be um, NO2 squared over, uh, so the pressure so of NO2. Put the value here like this over the pressure of the N2O4. So if you're going to calculate here, what would be the value that you're going to get? So if you're going to get this one, and I think, what do you get here? Negative, and what's the value with this part here? 8.314. Forty times ten to the the ten to the three. Jules per mole, and that will give you what? Anyone? That's 8.4, negative 8.4 kilojoules. So that's negative three point, negative three kilojoules per mole. So you will have here a negative three, zero six, or we could say three. Oh, that should be 8.46 here. So you have 3.06 negative 3.06 times 10 to the three joules, no, kilojoules, 3.06 kilojoules per mole. So to answer the question here, okay, what can you say about the direction of the reaction? Anyone? going to go from uh, left to, to right. It's uh, spontaneous. 
So this will be a spontaneous reaction going to the forward one. Yes, Chino. Did you change the 5.40 to Joe's or no? Hmm? Did you change the 5.40 to Joe's or no? Yeah, I mean, the one is a kilojoules here and the other one is a joule. So I want them to be what we call the same. So you just divide this with a thousand here. So you have an 8.46 kilojoules. Okay. So question. So to show you uh, an application of this, uh, we could say concept, we have this thing that happens in our uh, everyday life the so-called coupled reaction. So if you ask yourself, the coupled reaction usually has a smaller weight that move upward. This is a non-spontaneous process and you can do it by just coupling it with the falling of a larger weight. And one example that we can have is this so-called ATP and ADP thing, okay? So as you could see, Glucose is the main source of our energy. So it's break down to give you the ATP, which is the fuel of our body. Now, the fuel of our body would allow us to be able to have amino acids synthesized to form proteins. Now, amino acid forming protein is a non-spontaneous process, but you can make it spontaneous by taking advantage, okay? the breakdown of the glucose here with uh, CO2 and H2O. So this is, we could say what, what, what is happening. So alanine glycine, it's going to need around 29 kilojoules. So the K there is less than one. But if you're going to couple it with the ATP, what will happen is you're going to get an energy around negative two, which is enough for the reaction to take place. Okay. Now, for those who are asking the review, you come back here at 12, okay? Because we're supposed to, do, to finish the chapter by 12 o'clock. If you're just attending this review session, then come back here at 12. You're not helping the class, okay? We're not done yet with the chapter. So question. Any question? Can you go over the bottom? Equation again with ATP in water. So the, the way that you have here is you this reaction here, you couple it with this one. So this alone, just this amino acids like alanine and glycine to produce this uh, alanine glycine, you would need 29 uh, kilojoules, but you cannot do that on its own. So what you're going to do, you couple the reaction with the ATP and the water here, the production of ATP and the water. And overall, that will give you a negative delta two. So that means that reaction is spontaneous. So the way that it happened, as the breakdown of glucose to carbon dioxide produce ATP, that ATP is used to, break, uh, to, to synthesize your amino acids into the proteins. So this is all about what we call chapter 17.
So next week, when, we, we, when we're done with the exam, we're going to go straight away with chapter 18. Because I don't know if you knew it, we have our exam three next week, and then we're going to have a break because of the Thanksgiving break. And then we meet one more uh, on December. I'm not sure if it's three or four. Okay. I think three, I think it's five. And then what will happen is we're going to have the exam on December 12th. So question. Now, if you're going to look at the, So the review handout that you have was already posted here, like uh, chapter 15A, pH, pH of weak acid, base salt, 16A problem, solubility problem. So I want everyone to go over them. So right now, what we're going to do is go over if you have any question on uh, what we call the problem set. Now, I would rather say that you type them in the chat. Um, Professor, I, my question is, is not like a question, like a problem question, it's like a solving question. What's your question? Uh, in in some of the in some of the solving you were doing last week, you use molar and in some you use moles. So like, when do you use moles in the rice? It depends on what you're going to interact. Okay, molarity is con concentration. Moles is the one when you interact with the titration. Whenever you titrate something, when you lose the equivalence point, you look at the number of moles of them. Because remember, the relationship that you have there is in terms of moles, like one mole of acid reacting with one mole of base. You just don't have to memorize how it's going to solve it. You have to understand. What is the de definition of moles over liter? Molarity. Molarity. Okay. So how do you get the moles from them? From the liters, the volumes. Yeah. You have to understand when do you use molarity and when do you use moles? So when you do titration, you want to know what is happening. You go to the moles level. You determine the concentration that you use and multiply it with the volume that you use in liters. So moles over liter times liter will give you moles. So who wants to start the question? Anyone?
Professor, I have one more question, please. About what? Um, there, there are some questions that you will like, this hydrolysis, this hydrolysis. When, so, so I wanted yeah. to go on the, lecture, on the lecture part of the hydrolysis. Which species usually hydrolyze? Anyone? Which species hydrolyze? Usually the conjugate acid of weak base and the conjugate base of weak acid. So, question related to the problem set. Anyone? No question? Question related to the problem set? You ready for the exam? Anyone? Um, Professor, please, do you mind going over the conjugate acid and base thing? Because I get it confused. And this point that... No, I, I rather utilize the reviewer that we have here right now. Okay? Other students, this is not a, 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 a what we call one student's doing everything. If no one will ask question, then we can what? Well, if you want to go the highlight in the importance that we have, then I would just say you, you go over those uh, sample problem that I posted, the recorded sample problem that I posted, okay? Because the way I want this class to do is you, you, you are prepared to answer questions that are needed to determine if you understand the concept. You are not just prepared to answer specific questions that will come out in the exam. So it refers to what we call conjugate acid and base pair. So what do we know about it? Okay. So when we have what we call an acid reacting with the base, it produces a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. So if you have, let's say, HF reacting with uh, H2O, it's going to produce what? H3O plus N, F minus. So which, which is the acid here and which is the base? HF. Hmm? HF. So this is? The acid, and this is the base. So this makes this what? HCO plus is what? Conjugate? Uh, acid. Acid. Conjugate acid, uh, conjugate acid, and this is the conjugate base. Okay? Now, what is HF? Is it weak acid or weak base? Weak acid. Okay, so it's a weak acid, it's not a strong acid. So what does it mean? If you have a fluoride, okay, that can hydrolyze. So for instance, if you have, let's say, NAF, so you have here a salt. So what would be the pH of the salt? Will it be more than seven, less than seven, or equals to seven? More than seven. So as you could see here, that is more than seven. Now, one thing to 
Now this one is you have a strong base coming from the uh, the Na coming from uh, Na, and you have the F minus coming from the weak acid. And if you're going to look at this, the hydrolysis. Good. So this is also another reason to look what the pH that you have, OH minus when the F minus hydrolyzed with water. So this is how you look at the conjugation and the hydrolysis that you have. So the one that hydrolyzes the conjugate acid or conjugate base of the, what we call, uh, the, the one that uh, hydrolyzer the conjugate acid or weak base or conjugate base of weak acid, okay? Mm -hmm. So question. And if you're going to have another example, let's say ammonium chloride. So this will dissociate to give you what? Ammonium ion and chloride. So what will be the pH of the salt? Anyone? Yes, pH what? Less than? Less than seven. Seven. And if you want to know why, you could say that the chloride is what? A conjugate base of a strong acid. The ammonium ion is a conjugate acid of a weak base. So between the two, since this one came from a weak base and this comes from a strong acid, the ammonium ion is the one that will hydrolyze. So if you undergo hydrolysis, you react yourself with water, producing your NH3 and H3O plus. And the H3O plus is the reason why you have a pH that is less than seven. The question. Uh, Professor, you said uh, NH4 plus is a conjugate acid of a weak base? Yeah. Okay. Could you go back to the screen, please? What? Could you go back to that screen? That you There's just no more screen. Damn. It's cleared already. You can go back to the recording if you want. Question. Have you started doing your uh, reviewer? I mean, maybe not all of you are still uh, what you call ready for the exam. And, it, it, uh, and I, I told you the, the answer to the question that you have here, the, their calculation is also given to you. So I'm just hoping that if you need some clarification, this is the time that we can go over them. Because I don't think uh, a day before our exam, which is the office R is enough for you to go over all of this.
and you will have another quiz before the exam. And that is just the exam three coverage, like a dry run of that. I'm not sure if all of you were able to get the two quizzes uh, before, uh, before we meet today. I think the deadline that I set there is 11.59 Friday. I emailed everyone about that. Um, we go to yes. number 18. Number 18. So the Ka of the formic acid is this one. So what is the pH of a sodium formate? So if we're going to look at this, so this is a problem in salt. Okay. So what, what do you have there? 0.35 molar sodium formate. So you have here Na uh, formic. So that's NaHCO. Is that, the, is that the right one that I put there? I want to see. HCO. Is that, yeah. NaCHO2. Wait, I think I have a mistake. NaCHO2. So that will dissociate to give you Na plus N, CHO2 minus. And you have there what? 0.35 molar, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So if you have that 0.35 molar, that will dissociate to also give you 0.35 molar of your Na plus and 0.35 molar of your CHO2 minus. So which one will hydrolyze? Uh, which of the two the ions will hydrolyze? So most likely it's this one because that is the conjugate base of a weak acid. So it will hydrolyze with reaction with water. So you will have a CHO2H plus OH minus. Okay. Now you are asked based on the problem, what is the pH? And you're given there the Ka of the formic acid, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative four. Now, what do you get this from this reaction? If you're going to write this reaction, CHO2 uh, uh, minus plus water giving you CH. CHO2H plus OH minus. So what do you get here? What KU do you get here? Anyone? So, uh, so then you have KB. A KB. So you have a KB. And you can get KB when the KA is given, just like KW over KA. And then you're going to put here, you know, the X over X or X times X divided by 0.35 minus x. And all you need to do is get the value here. So 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative four. And then you have x squared here over 0.35. Then once you get the x, what's the value of the x that you have there? That is equals to your hydroxide. So you get there the POH and then the pH. So that's how you solve this problem. This approximation method will work. I would suggest just use that. I'm trying to make life easier for you. Is there going to be an equation where the quadratic formula is? Required? I don't think so. Okay.
Next one. Next question. We still have 50 minutes or 40 minutes because we should end by 12 50. So the coverage is chapter 15 and 16. Are we clear on that? It's chapter uh 15 and 16. Okay, so if you have the calculation, you have to get know how to get the pH of strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base, and uh, what we call the salts. And then you have to know also the buffer problem. Okay, the titration problem. And we also have to know some of these so called solubility problem. So question. Question. Question? Uh, can we do number 31? Hmm? Uh, can we do uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, can do... a question. Can you type the, the, the question? Sure. The sound system of this is not really good. Okay, number 31. So what is the pH prepared by dissolving 0.35 moles of CH3 NH3Cl in one liter of 1.1 molar of CH3 and H2. So what do you need to know here? What's the formula that you need to know to answer this? Because if you don't know that formula, then you're not be able to answer this question. So you need to do the henderson Hazelback equation. So pH is just equals to pKa plus log of the base over the acid. So, I think if you're going to look at the question there, the PKA 31, okay, or the one that is given is the KB 4.4 times 10 to the negative four. Right? So what do we do? We're going to convert this to KA. So Ka is equals to one times 10 to the negative 14 over 4.4 times 10 to the negative four. So whatever you get there, you're going to get the negative log of that. And then you put it on that one. Now the base here would be what? So if you're going to look at the what we call thing here, so there's a base here. So CH3, NH3Cl. So I'll just try to share it to you. So which one is the base here? 
the 1.1 or the 0.35? Because whatever the, the, the PKA that I get here, so I'm going to put it plug here. So what, what, which one is the one that we have here? The 1.1 or the 0.35? So the one is the 0.35 and the other one is the 1.1. So if you're going to base on this problem here, this is the, oh wait, I think it's the other way around, my mistake. It should be the 1.1 and the 0.35, my mistake. So the acid that you have is the 0.35. And why did you say 0.35 moles? Because you divide it with one liter. So that gives you the molarity. And then you have 1.1 molarity here of your methyl amine. So that's your base. I'll try to download the thing here so that you will see the number. So if we're going to do the calculation here. So that's 31, right? So this is what you have. No, oh, no, wait, wait. I think that's, yeah, 31. Why is the answer key different from it? Now it's this one. Oh, did I make a mistake here? So I don't have a pro, uh, my answer key here. Oh, this can't be. So if we're going to look at the numbers that we have here, since I think I messed up with the answer key here. So one exponent negative 14 divided by 4.4 exponent negative four. So that's 227, 2.27. Then get the log of that. So I have a 10.64 here. And then 1.1 divided by 0.35 and then get the log of that. So the answer is around 11.14. So let's look at the choices that you have there. So the one that you will have there, this one, letter D. Thirty-one is letter D. So the, the main thing that you need to remember here is what? You need to know the, uh, what we call henderson Hazelback equation. So that's one formula that you need to know. Next question.
Professor, for 31, you know, do okay. you need to um, do you need to do the reaction where methyl methylamine hydrochloride is dissolved and or dissociates? No, you don't need. All you need to know is determine which is the base and which is the acid. Okay. And I think the answer key is right there if you're going to look at it. Now I think I know why. So usually you get there the Ka, K, Kw over Kb, and then you get that value. So you get whatever is the negative log of 2.3 times 10 to the 11, and then log of 1.1 over 0.35, giving you an overall pH of 11.14. Question. Question. Chino, question. Pergo, you have a question? Yeah, question, Chino. Hmm, Professor, I was asking you about the Brunstead Lowry thing. The what? The Brunstead Lowry acid base thing. Yeah, I just, I, I just discussed the Brunstead Lowry uh, acid base thing. That's the conjugate acid base pair. Oh. You have to identify which is the acid, you identify which is the base. Again, what's the difference of conjugate acid? If you have an acid and it's conjugate base, what's the difference between the two? Your acid has more hydrogen than your conjugate base. And if you have a conjugate acid, it has more hydrogen than your base. So for instance, if you have what we call water, what's the conjugate acid of water? What's the conjugate base of water? Okay. So the conjugate acid is just one hydrogen more and the conjugate base is one hydrogen less. Those are simple stuff that will be asked in your multiple choice. Now you cannot ignore your multiple choice. Hey, Professor, I have a question. Okay. Is this is H3O clause? Is is it a is it a um is it a weak acid or a strong acid? It's an acid only. And that's the only, we could say, strong acid that you see in solution. Mm, okay. You don't see HCl as a strong acid in the solution. Why? Because what happened to the HCl? When you dissolve it, it becomes what? An H3O plus. So you don't see the HCl in the solution, what you see in the solution as the acid is the H3O plus. Question. Can you go over Question? 24, please? Okay, yeah, 24. Number 24. So the solubility of lead chloride is 1.6 negative 2 moles per liter. So what is the KSP? Okay, so we're going to solve it here. 
So you're given their lead chloride. So when they dissociate, they would form lead 2 plus and 2 chloride. And if you're going to look at the dissociation that they have initially, you don't have, and then you form plus a plus 2s. So you have an s here and a 2s. So if you're going to look at the KSP is equals to Pb2 plus plus chloride squared. And then you're going to replace it with what you have there. So this is an S and this is a 2S. So you have a 2S squared. So in the end, this will be a 4S cubed equals to the KSP. So what do you have? What's the one being asked? You're asked for the solubility. Oh, no, the KSP. So you have the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter. So what is that? Can we say that's the S? Yes. So that's your S. That's your solubility. So all you need to do is substitute it there. So four times 1.6 times 10 to the negative two to the third. So whatever the answer there, that's the answer to your question. That answer your question, Sarah? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Number 40. So where's the question? Okay, so calculate the pH of the uh, point 30 uh, zero, zero molar uh, divided by 0 0.036 bar per system. And what is the pH after the addition of 20 ml of 0 0.5, 0 0.05 uh, molar NaOH to 80 ml molar of the buffer solution? So you have to look at this in terms of what we call the initial given. So the first thing that you have is the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So you have the base over the acid. So if you're going to look at the given there, so what do you have there? Ka of 5.56 times 10 to the 10. Right? Plus log of what's the concentration that we have there? Okay, you have to know which is which. Mm. Point three and point thirty six. So it's given to you already. So this is a point three. 10.36. So that will give you what? What's the initial pH that you have there?
So that would be anyone? So it's a negative log of 5.56 times 10 to the 10. Nine point twenty five plus so point thirty divided by point thirty six. And get the log of that. So you have around what? Right? I got the I got a pH of ten point eight. Am I right? So 9.17, I think, is the answer there at the beginning. And then what's the next question that is being asked there? Uh, you add it with 20 ml of 0 0.05 NaOH. So you can convert it to moles. So that's 20 divided by a thousand times 0 0.05. So you have one times 10 to the negative three moles of your hydroxide. Do you follow? And if you're going to look at the system, based on the question there, you have the point 30 and the point 36. And how much did you use? 80 ml of the buffer solution. So I could have a point zero two four here, and I can have point thirty six times eighty divided by a thousand. Point zero two eight eight. Do you follow? Because what I'm going to do now is which one will be going to be reacting. So you have a hydroxide reacting with what? The acid to produce, no, the NH4 plus to produce the base. So I have there the one times 10 to the negative three. So what is the NH4 there? So I want to look at the question again. So the NH4 plus there with the acid one is the 0.36. So that's the one that is the 0 0.0288. And then this one is 0 0.0240. Okay. Now we subtract it. You're going to utilize everything here. So one times that to the zero is just 0 0.001. So that you subtract it and this one you form it. And in the end, this one is zero, and this one will become what? 0 0.0278, and this one becomes 0 0.0250. And all you need to do is just use that number there. So in the next calculation, so you will have, this is the acid, so you will have 0 0.0278, and here you will have 0 0.0250. You can ignore the volume because they're just the same volume. So you just cancel out. So if you have a 0 0.0250 divided by 0 0.0278, you're going to get the log of that. So you get 0 0.046 here.
Point zero two fifty divided by point zero two seven eight. Get the log. I get what a point nine five. No, it's point zero four six. Not that one. It's plus point zero four six. So I get around nine point twenty. Question. Question. Can we go over the titration question? Sure. One of the first one is 38. So you have here ammonia titrated with 30 ml. So 30 ml of 0.20 molar ammonia is titrated with 30 ml of HCl. So what is the pH at this point? Okay, so if you're going to look at that, I'm going to... So the titration is NH3 plus HCl, right? Yeah. So if you're going to look at this, NH3 would have 30 ml times 0.20. HCl would have 30 ml times 0.1. So if you're going to look at the reaction there, you, you're also given what we call the KB, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. So the first thing that we're going to do is maybe we can look at the reaction. So it's just NH3 reacting to produce. Okay, so HCl will give you H plus and Cl minus, and this will produce NH4 plus as one of them. Okay, so what are we going to do? Oh. Trying to look just 38. So we can get the moles of each of them. So what would that be? <clears throat> so 30 divided by 1,000 times 0.2. So I would have 0 0.006 moles. Now my H plus 30 times point, no, 30 divided by 1,000 times 0.1. That's just 0 0.0030. You follow? Yes. Now what will happen? 
when they're going to react, what will happen to them? So which one will be the uh, limiting reactant here? The H plus is limiting. So the H plus is the limiting, so that one you have here. Now remember, when you allow them to react, you also produce the ammonia. So in the end, you don't have this one, and you have here, what, 0 0.0030, and you have here 0 0.0030. Now, this could be just an henderson hazelback equation. pH is equals to pKa plus log base over acid, okay? Why? Because you're given there the Kb. So all you need to do is convert this to Ka. You can make one exponent negative 14 divided by 1.8 exponent negative 5. So that will give you 5.56 here times 10 to the 10. And then you have your lag of what? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So it's just point zero zero thirty, right? And then when they cancel out, because it's just one, so log of one is equal to zero. So whatever is the negative log of this, that's the answer that you will have. And that is equal to what? Nine point two five. Nine two five. Nine point two five. Nine point two five. Or nine point two six. Yeah. Okay. So that's one way to solve it. The long way is the one that I written in your uh, answer key. But this is just we could say an indirectly buffer problem but it's more on a titration, okay? Question? Okay. No, thank you very much. Now the next one, as requested by you, is it number 40 something? Yeah, so you, you, you are asked, you have a 100 ml of your uh, nitrous acid that is titrated with 0.1 molar. Now, this is a weak acid, so I just need to write them one by one. So we have here, oops. Point one. Now the Ka is equals to 4.5 times 10 to the negative four. And you are asked, what's the pH after you add 25, 100, and 140 ml of 0.1 molar NaOH? Okay, so how are we going to solve this uh, problem? So the way that we're going to solve this is to determine the number of moles in each setup, in each what we call point. So we started with what? The reaction. So what would be the reaction? HNO2 reacting with NaOH, right? And what do they produce? We can get NaNO2. NaNO2 and? H2O. Water? Is that right? So which one will have the, uh, the same moles of substance all throughout? Uh, HNO2. So this one, the HNO2, it will have the same moles all throughout. And it is always what? 0.1 
moles. 0.1 times uh, 100 over 1,000, that will give you 0 0.01, right? 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. Okay. Now, the one that will change here is the NaOA. So depending on this, you're just going to get what? The corresponding moles that they have. So 0.1 times uh, 25 divided by 1,000. So that would be around 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 here. And then the 100 times uh, uh, divided by 1,000 times 0.1. So that is a 0 0.01 here, right? And then the 140 divided by 1,000 times 0.1. So you have a 0 0.014 moles here. So there are what we call three points that you have. Okay. So at the beginning, you can just deal with this one. So the typical reaction happened. So which one will react here? 0 0.025 minus 0 0.0025, and then you form 0 0.0025. So in the end, you will not have this, but you will have this what? 0 0.0075. Does that make sense? Hmm? And this one will be 0 0.0025. So what will be the pH when you have that? You can use the henderson Hazelback equation because you're given what? The Ka. So get the negative log of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4 and then add it with log. So I will have here the 0 0.0025 and the 0 0.0075. So what's the pH that I will get there? I got 2.87. 2.87 or around 2.9, right? Right. So that's the answer at this portion. Now at the second portion, what will happen? Both of them has the same, right? So if you're going to look at this HNO2 plus, it's really the OH minus that reacts with it to produce NO2 minus N. H2O. So if you're going to look at this, what, what was really happening here? So you have here a 0 0.01, but this one will also be 0 0.01. Then you will allow them to react, so all of them will be used up. But you're going to form this. Now what will happen with NO2? Gina, what will happen with NO2? That will hydrolyze, will hydrolyze. Yeah. Okay? to give you HNO2 and hydroxide. Now, if you're going to look at the concentration here, that's a concentration of 0 0.01. And then the, you, the typical thing that we have, the minus X, minus, uh, this is the minus X, and then you have the plus X, giving you here X and X. So this one is what? KW equals to? not KW, KB, which is equals to KW over the 4.5. I just put the KA there so that you will not be surprised. So if you're going to continue here, so that's one times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4 equals to x squared over 0 0.01. And the x that you will get here is an OH. So you get the POH and then you get the pH. And that would be equals to what? 
Hmm. You get 7.7? I got different professor. This is where you multiply the Ka times, um, I'm sorry, the Kb and the 0 0.01. Yeah, so one exponent negative 14 divided by 4.5 exponent negative four, that's 2, 2, 2 times 10 to the negative 11 times 0 0.01. You get around 2.22. And then you get the square root of that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get around 4.71 times 10 to the negative 7. When you get the log, okay, that would give you around 6.33. And if you're going, that's the POH. You end up with a 7.7 .7 as the pH. So this is the pOH. This is the X. Thank you. So we already done the second part. So from let's say, this is the thing. If you have a titration problem, if you're adding a, a base on it, then you have to make sure that the pH increases. Okay. So from uh, initially that is 2.9, it now becomes 7.7. .7. Now the last part that we have here is this one. So in this part, you're going to have more hydroxide now. So 0 0.014 minus 0 0.01. So you will have your what? 0 0.004. Four. And all you need to do is divide it with the total volume. What is the total volume that you have here? 140, so that's 0. 0.240 liters. The so 0. 0. 0.004 divided by 0. 0.240. So that is the concentration that you have for your hydroxide. And then you get the negative log of that. So you will have around 1.78. That's the pOH. So to get the pH, you will get around 12.22. Or 12.2. Question. So just like before, we can start as early as 8.30. And then we finish by 10. We resume around 10, 10.20. We start with chapter 18. And then we'll be done around 12.30. So question? So we will have an office hour on, uh, we could say Friday. We can start from 9.30 to 10.30. Okay. So I'm going to email to you once the quiz is available. Yes, Nevana.
I was gonna ask if um just say we can't um make it for the office hours if we have any you can email yet. me the question okay thank and you and I'll try to answer it okay thank you So if you have any question, you cannot make it to the office hour, then I can, uh, you can email me. And I would suggest you go over the problem set. If you finish the Alex that you need to do, okay? If you, uh, you don't need extra points, okay? Giving you extra points and you not doing the Alex is just a waste of time. Because you failed Alex, it's just like you failed this, of course, again, also, because Alex is what, 25% of your grade. Uh, but Professor, are you going to give us the dry run, that kind of dry run? Yeah, that's what I said. I'm going to email to you once the quiz is available. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. So question? So we see each other on Saturday for our third exam. Okay. Thanks, Professor. Have a good weekend. Okay. Have a great week. See you next week. Thank you, Professor. Have a wonderful weekend. You too.